Hi guys, we're here for our Bible in a Year Challenge reading. Today we're going to be um, doing December 2nd and 3rd. So for December 2nd, the reading will come from Hosea 9 through 10, Proverbs 20, and Matthew 1. So we finished Luke on yesterday's reading. Okay, so we'll start with Hosea chapter 9. Hosea announces Israel's punishment. O people of Israel, do not rejoice as others do, for you have been unfaithful to your God, hiring yourselves out like prostitutes, offering sacrifices to other gods on every threshing floor. So now your harvest will be too small to feed you. The grapes you gather will not quench your thirst. You may no longer stay here in this land of the Lord. You will be carried off to Egypt and Assyria, where you will live on food that is ceremonially unclean. There, far from home, you will not be allowed to pour out wine as a sacrifice to the Lord. None of the sacrifices you offer there will please him. Such sacrifices will be unclean, just as food touched by a person in mourning is unclean. All who present such sacrifices will be defiled. They may eat this food to feed themselves, but they may not offer it to the Lord. What then will you do on festival days? What will you do on days of feasting in the Lord's presence? Even if you escape destruction from Assyria, you will be conquered by Egypt. Memphis will bury you. Briars will take over your treasures of silver. Brambles will fill your homes. The time of Israel's punishment has come. The day of payment is almost here. Soon Israel will know this all too well. The prophets are crazy, the people shout. The inspired men are mad. So they taunt, for the nation is burdened with sin and shows only hatred for those who love God. The prophet is a watchman, watchman for my God over Israel. Yet traps are laid in front of him wherever he goes. His face, he faces hostility even in the house of God. The things my people do are so depraved as what they did in Gibeah long ago. God will not forget. He will surely punish them for their sins. The Lord says, O Israel, when I first found you, it was like finding fresh grapes in the desert. When I saw your ancestors, it was like seeing the first ripe figs of the season. But then they deserted me for a ball pure, giving themselves to that shameful idol. Soon they became as vile as the God they worshipped. The glory of Israel will fly away like a bird, for your children will die at birth or perish in the womb, or never even be conceived. Even if your children do survive to grow up, I will take them from you. It will be a terrible day when I turn away and leave you alone. I have watched Israel become as beautiful and pleasant as Tyre, but now Israel will bring out her children to be slaughtered. O oh Lord, what should I request for your people? I will ask for wombs that don't give birth and breasts that give no milk. The Lord says, all their wickedness begin at Gilgal. There I begin to hate them. I will drive them from my land because of their evil actions. I will love them no more because all their leaders are rebels. The people of Israel are stricken. Their roots are dried up. They will bear no more fruit. And if they give birth, I will slaughter their beloved children. My God will reject the people of Israel because they will not listen or obey. They will be wanderers, homeless among the nations. In chapter 10, the Lord's judgment against Israel. How prosperous Israel is, a luxuriant vine loaded with fruit. But the more wealth the people got, the more they poured it on the altars of their foreign gods. The richer the harvest they brought in, the more beautiful the statues and idols they built. The hearts of the people are fickle. They are guilty and must be punished. The Lord will break down their foreign altars and smash their many idols. Then they will say, we have no king because we didn't fear the Lord. But what's the difference? What could a king do for us anyway? They spout empty words and make promises they don't intend to keep. So perverted justice springs up among them like poisonous weeds in a farmer's field. The people of Samaria tremble for their calf idol at beth Aven. The people mourn over it, and the priests wail for it, because its glory will be stripped away. This idol they love so much will be carted away with them when they go as captives to Assyria, a gift to the great king there. Israel will be, will be laughed at and shamed because its people have trusted in this idol. Samaria will be cut off, and its kings will disappear like a chip of wood on an ocean wave. And the pagan shrines of Aben, the place of Israel's sin, will crumble. Thorns and thistles will grow up around them. They will beg the mountains to bury them and the hills to fall on them. The Lord says, O Israel, ever since that awful night in Gibeah, there has been only sin and more sin. You have made no progress whatsoever. Was it not right that the wicked men of Gibeah be attacked? Now I will attack you, too, for your rebellion and disobedience. I will call out to the armies of the nations to punish you for your multiplied sins. Israel is like a trained heifer accustomed to treading out the grain, an easy job that she loves. Now I will put a heavy yoke on her tender neck. I will drive her in front of the plow, Israel. Israel and Judah must now break up the hard ground. Their days of ease are gone. I said, plant the good seeds of righteousness and you will harvest a crop of my love. 
Plow up the hard ground of your hearts, for now it is time to seek the Lord, that he may come and shower righteousness upon you. But you have cultivated wickedness and raised a thriving crop of sins. You have eaten the fruit of lies, trusting in your military might, believing that great armies could make your nation safe. Now the terrors of war will rise among your people. All your fortifications will fall, just as they did when Shalman destroyed Beth Arbel. Even mothers and children were dashed to death there. You will share that fate, Bethel, because of your great wickedness. When the day of judgment dawns, the king of Israel will be completely destroyed. In Proverbs 20, wine produces mockers, liquor leads to brawls. Whoever is led astray by a drink cannot be wise. The king's fury is like a lion's roar. To rouse his anger is to risk your life. Avoiding a fight is a mark of honor. Only fools insist on quarreling. If you are too lazy to plow in the right season, you'll have no food at the harvest. Though good advice lies deep within a person's heart, the wise will draw it out. Many will say they are, they are loyal friends, but who can find one who is really faithful? The godly walk with integrity. Blessed are their children after them. When a king judges, he carefully weighs all the evidence, distinguishing the bad from the good. Who can say, I have cleansed my heart. I am pure and free from sin. The Lord despises double standards of every kind. Even children are known by the way they act, whether their conduct is pure and right. Ears to hear and eyes to see, both are gifts from the Lord. If you love sleep, you will end in poverty. Keep your eyes open and there will be plenty to eat. The buyer haggles over the price, saying it's worthless and brags about getting a bargain. Why is speech is rare and more valuable than golden rubies? Be sure to get collateral from anyone who guarantees the debt of a stranger. Get a deposit if someone guarantees the debt of a foreigner. Stolen bread tastes sweet, but it turns to gravel in the mouth. Plans succeed though through good counsel. Don't go to war without the advice of others. A gossip tells secrets, so don't hang around with someone who talks too much. If you curse your father or mother, the lamp of your life will be snuffed out. An inheritance obtained early in life is not a blessing in the end. Don't say, I will get even for this wrong. Wait for the Lord to handle the matter. The Lord despises double standards. He is not pleased by dishonest scales. How can we understand the road we travel? It is the Lord who directs our steps. It is dangerous to make a rash promise to God before counting the cost. A wise king finds the wicked, lays them out like wheat, then runs the crushing wheel over them. The Lord's searchlight penetrates the human spirit, exposing every hidden motive. Unfailing love and faithfulness protect the king. His throne is made secure through love. The glory of the young is their strength. The gray hair of experience is the splendor of the old. Physical punishment cleanses away evil. Such discipline purifies the heart. Okay, in Matthew chapter 1. Okay. The record of Jesus' ancestors. This is the record of the ancestors of Jesus, the Messiah, a descendant of King David and of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Judah and his brother. Judah was the father of Perez and Zerah. Their brother was Tamar. Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Ram. Ram was the father of Abinadab. Abinadab was the father of Nashon. Nashon was the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz. His mother was Rahab. Boaz was the father of Obed. His mother was Ruth. Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse was the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon. His mother was Bathsheba, the widow of Uriah. Solomon was the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam was the father of Abijah. Abijah was the father of Asaph. Asaph was the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was the father of Jehoram. Jehoram was the father of Uzziah. Uzziah was the father of Jotham. Jotham was the father of Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah was the father of Manasseh. Manasseh was the father of Amos. Or Amos. Amos was the father of Josiah. Josiah was the father of, Jehoi of Jehoiachin and his brothers born at the time of the exile to Babylon, after the Babylonian exile. Jehoiachin was the father of Shealtiel. Shealtiel was the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was the father of Abud. 
Abed was the father of Eliakim. Eliakim was the father of Azor. Azor was the father of Zadok. Zadok was the father of Achim. Achim was the father of Elud. Elud was the father of Eliezer. Eliezer was the father of Mathen. Mathen was the father of Jacob. Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Mary was the mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah. All those listed above include 14 generations from Abraham to King David, and 14 from David's time to the Babylonian exile, and 14 from the Babylonian exile to the Messiah. The birth of Jesus the Messiah. Now this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph, but while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her fiancé, being a just man, decided to break the engagement quietly so as not to disgrace her publicly. As he considered this, he fell asleep, and an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to go ahead with your marriage to Mary, for the child within her has been conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of these, all of this happened to fulfill the Lord's message through the, his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and he will be called Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded. He brought Mary home to be his wife, but she remained a virgin until her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. That is all for today's reading. For December 3rd, it says, Reflect on God as Giver.